Hello YouTube. Here is my Hyundai Elantra Touring 2012 car. Um, it's hit the 60,000 mark and I believe it's time for me to uh, change the automatic transmission fluid. So today I will be going through that. It's my first time doing this. So I will be noting everything that um, I learned in this process and I will be sharing um, just how it goes. So how do we know if it's time to change our automatic transmission fluid? Well, it's pretty simple. You just take a look at this um, dipstick here, the one that's labeled AT fluid or AT oil. Um, so after you get the dipstick out, um, you could smear it onto a towel and it, as you can see, my transmission fluid's a bit dark, uh, meaning that it's probably a good time for me to change it. Uh, you don't want it to turn like black and be burnt. That's um, that's a bad sign. So the items that you need is automatic transmission fluid, of course. Um, I'm going with AMS oil today. Um, this is 100% synthetic automatic transmission fluid. Um, I I was debating whether to use this one or the OEM version and I just ended up with AMS oil. Uh, I mean, I'm getting a tarp to catch whatever oil that doesn't go into this oil pan. And lastly, I bought this um, this kit, uh, this uh, transmission uh, fluid filter kit. So um, if you look in the Hyundai Elantra touring manual, um, they actually don't recommend changing the filter for some weird reason. They they do a reverse flush um, after going online and reading about it. A lot of people don't think that reverse flush is such a good idea. Um, you know, these filters, they get clogged up with uh, contaminants and all that. And it seems like a good idea to just replace it. Um, so this kit comes with a gasket. Um, if you don't get this gasket, you're gonna have to get the, um, the, the gasket maker where you put this um, like this silicone bead around and uh, and seal it. I'm hoping that this rubber gasket works. Um, and uh, yeah, that's pretty much all you need. Um, this I got from Rock Auto. Uh, I'll put links below for uh, all the materials. So in order to get everything out of the transmission, the service manual suggests uh, if you don't have that fancy um, vacuum or that fancy machine that um, reverse flushes the system that you just disconnect the um, oil cooler pump which is I think this is this one right here and you have the car on for like 30 seconds and run everything dry um, they warn you not to have that on for too long because uh, you don't want to run the pump without any uh, fluid in there for a extended period of time, so um, I'm going to give this a shot. I'm going to take that off. Uh, I put a funnel on the bottom, so if I could get that hose to point downward, and then I put the um, oil um, pan on the bottom there, um, I'm going to try to get the transmission oil to pump out of here. So this will be the most thorough way to um, get all the transmission fluid out. Um, the other way is just straining the pan but um, this will get uh, probably, I don't know, extra half gallon out or more. So I'm gonna give this a shot. Well, I am a complete fool. I got the wrong, um, the wrong end. I got the, got the output instead of the input. Ended up spewing transmission fluid all over the inside of my car. Yeah, it's good that I put the tarp on the bottom though, because, yeah, it's a huge mess. I'm going to get this cleaned up, and, oh man, so I guess the hose I wanted is the one on the bottom there. I don't know if you can see it, but it's that one. So I got the, I disconnected the output, not the input. Oh man. Do not unplug the top one. The top one's, uh, top one's the return, 
not the uh, not uh, where it comes out of. Alrighty, so I removed the air intake um, piece to clean out everything in here. I tried, but um, it's not. I'm not going to be able to get everything. <laughs> I just hope. Uh, hope this doesn't damage my car. Thankfully, oil is uh, not corrosive or anything. Um, anyway, so I drained all the oil out of um, the transmission while having it running. Uh, if you could see down there, that's the one that you want to remove. So it's the bottom one, it's the bottom hose. All right, I'm under the car now. First thing you're gonna have to remove is this dust shield. There's four bolts, uh, they're 10 millimeter. One right there, one right there. One, oh, maybe there's only three, I'm sorry. There's three bolts. One right, you can't see, glare. Yeah, one right there. It's all wet from all that oil I spilled. All right, I'll take this off and then at the pan is right there. I'm gonna open that up and we'll start draining. Alrighty, so I removed the dust cover from the bottom of the car. Um, and there's the transmission oil uh, pan. Uh, we're gonna be removing uh, the drain bolt and then draining the rest of the oil and then removing all these screws all around um, so we can get to the oil filter in there. Uh, these bolts here uh, are 10 millimeters, and this one here is 70 millimeter. Alrighty. We're draining the oil pan first before we take off the gas. Oh wow. That's interesting. There's nothing to drain. I guess if you run uh, the oil pump, it uh, drains everything for you. So I guess, uh, I guess the next thing to do is uh, take off the gasket. I've seen a lot of videos where they take off the gasket and there's still quite a bit of oil remaining. Uh, make sure to have this uh, oil pan underneath when you take out this gasket because when you drop this, uh, there's still oil in there that might leak out. Alrighty, I got the gasket off. Um, after unscrewing all the screws, it was really tight on there, it wouldn't come off. Here's the inside of the pan, or the, whatever. Um, anyway. Yeah, it wouldn't come off, so I had to pry it with this guy here. I stuck it in the corner and I uh, hit it with a mallet a few times. And then uh, it broke the seal. It was really hard coming off. And like I expected, uh, there's a whole bunch of oil in there. Uh, because the seal was so hard to break off, a whole bunch of oil spilled as I broke the seal. Oh, it's just not fun. All right, so next part, I'm gonna go get the filter, which is right there, right here. I'm gonna take that off, and then uh, uh, I need to take two magnets from that thing and put onto the new filter. Um, I'll clean up the filter and the gasket, um, the oil pan. Um, you have to get rid of the gasket material, um, so when you put down the new one, it'll have a good seal. Alrighty, so I got this off. Um, check that your new filter uh, is exactly the same as the old one. I think we have a pretty good match here. Uh, as I was saying, you need to take a few things off the old one, particularly these magnets. Grab these magnets and clean them up and put them on the new one. You see there, it's all junk. I don't know if you can see it. I'm gonna wipe it off. Look 
how much stuff is on there. Yeah. Mm, look at that. All that junk. So that's, uh, I guess this grabs all the iron, iron filings or whatever that um, comes off the transmission. And we will put that on the new one. Right there. And I'll clean that up and put that other one right there. Um, after you do that, you gotta clean the gasket material off the um, the pan. You take a plastic scraper. Make sure it's not a metal one because you don't want to gouge. Um, you don't want to gouge your pan and make a uh, way for leaks. So just you want to get rid of all this uh, gasket material so that uh, when you put the new thing on, which I'm using here, this rubber piece that I could um, mate well. So I'm gonna clean, well I'm gonna clean up the magnet a little bit more, um, clean up the gasket, and then um, and then put this back together. Oh, one thing also, um, when you're scraping, um, don't uh, just scrape on this side, make sure you also scrape the other side um, on the car. Uh, I had to t take some of the material off of there too. Um, it gets stuck on both sides. Alright, so I'm putting back on the filter. Uh, I replaced the magnets on this side. There's the one on the one behind my finger. So uh, I'll make sure there's the washer. Um, I thought I might have to take it from the old one, but this new one had a washer, it just didn't have the magnets. That goes in like that, it's pretty snug. Alrighty. Dad, why are you laying on the floor? I'm working on the car. Okay, and then we screw it in. Um, everything here is eight pounds of torque. 8 pound foot of torque. Yes, that's what the measurement is. 8 pound foot of torque. Um, there's no... If you look in the manual, they don't say anything about the filter because they don't ever want you to replace it. I don't know. Uh, I couldn't find... Yeah, I couldn't find anything on the torque for the filter, but it felt pretty much as tight as the gasket, uh, the oil pan. So I'm going to keep it about the same. So. Eight pounds for this, uh, thirty pounds for the um, the oil. What's it? It's cold. I can't think. <laughs> the thirty pounds foot for the oil um, drain plug. Yes, the oil drain plug. Alrighty. After you get everything torqued down underneath your car. Make sure you put back on the hose down there. I don't know, I can't see it right now. The bottom hose. All the way down there. Make sure that hose is back on. Um, it took me a while to do that too. Then you can start filling up oil. So. Uh, one thing I would recommend is just put in a little bit at a time and then check on the bottom first to make sure your gasket has a good seal. Um, it would suck for you to be pouring oil and for uh, it to leak on the bottom. So uh, after that, um, after that I'm going to try turning on the car and hopefully my uh, automatic transmission still works. Alrighty, I just turned on the car. Um, I'm gonna switch through all the gears to get the transmission fluid. Flowing. Um, 
um, they say that you're supposed to go through all the gears to get it to refill the fluid through the torque converter. Alrighty, so if you look at the fluid, <coughs> it's a very different color. It's a red instead of that dark color that was before. Let me check the levels. Uh, I might have to top it off a little bit more and then uh, we should be all set. I'm going to go put um, the, the dust cover back on the bottom and the, um, the intake, uh, the air intake assembly up here. And I'm going to give it a test drive and hopefully uh, my transition is still... Alright, I am a dirty mess. Um, I got automatic transmission fluid everywhere. Anyway, uh, that took much longer than I expected or hoped. Um, but I got it done. Uh, the, I went for a test drive. Um, I'm able to go through all four gears. It, everything seemed to, um, to shift normally. Uh, like, you know, it shifted when I uh, feathered the pedal around 10 miles per hour or 20 miles per hour. Uh, like it usually does uh, and then it shifted normally when I uh, pre pressed a little harder so um, it looks good <laughs> I'm happy uh, I'm leaving a towel uh, or actually a box underneath the car overnight uh, to catch anything that drips out because uh, with that um, with that oil spill there's probably still more stuff dripping out I'm gonna watch out for red fluid because that means uh, if red fluid is dripping that means that the new fluid is dripping and uh, that means I have a leak. So um, hopefully there won't be any leaks. Uh, hope you found this video informative. Uh, that's how you change an automatic transmission on the Hyundai Elantra Touring. Um, thank you everyone. Well, thank you for all the other YouTubers who uh, record and put their um, stuff on. It really is, is very helpful and uh, I just want to put one up too because uh, I know somebody else with this car might be wondering, how do you do this? So there you have it. Uh, I'm going to take a shower now. Good night.